you're out on your patio and you're enjoying a drink and you're staring at the start of fall. The doorbell rings and you request Google to open the door lock for your friend who's there. Unfortunately, Google can't do that anymore. So you go, you get up and you open the door, but Miss A doesn't announce that you have opened the door. And all of this is because it's September 8th. Hello automators, thanks for tuning in again. I'm Brian from Automate Your Life and today I'm going to try and take the frustration out of automation, although this is a pretty hard period for all of us to go through. Unfortunately, some of these big changes have meant that some of us have struggled in our homes and we all know that we need some support around periods of big changes, right? Thanks mom. I actually already dealt with this first one when I got a V3 hub because I connected my Sonos speakers to that. I wanted to connect to this newer hub instead of my older one. And I also wanted the ability to resume music whenever I had a custom announcement come out of that speaker. So that's one of the great things about Speaker Companion and this new integration with Sonos. So if you a long time ago put your Sonos speakers into smart things, well, you're going to have to redo that and redo do your automations it doesn't take a long time personally I don't care about this next one but I know a number of you will but let me turn into Picasso for a second here and paint you a picture let's take a relatively small user base smart app and let's make it the most resource intensive thing on the platform let's base it on the technology that we know has to go away and then let's have that really resource intensive smart app actually cause reliability issues on the entire platform. Well, that's Echo Speaks, and unfortunately, come September 8th, it goes away. Now, what I'll tell you with this one is, if you're using Echo Speaks quite a bit, I'm sorry, heartfelt sorry, but just wait all the way till the deadline. Or you can redo the integration simply by using Miss A's routines and the integration with SmartThings. If you are someone who's using Echo Speaks, well, then you probably have the Miss A integration or the Google Home integration like me. And I have both and I migrated in advance to the new integration method. So come September 8th, you got to do the same thing I did. And then maybe your home will look like you have 653 very impressive smart home devices in both your Google Home and Amazon uh, voice assistant application so you can be fancy like me and have all that and in case you didn't notice I'm being a little sarcastic there because that is a major pain and that's part of the new integration method and unfortunately we can't choose which devices are being synchronized across so you end up with just a ton of duplicates super painful but this did provide a couple of side benefits. See, both integrations did get faster, 100%. There's also more device types that I noticed I got when I moved across. And a great example of that is the Shed devices that are now available between SmartThings and Google Home. And that integration will continue to deepen and so will device types. As Amazon and Google get better at defining those device types, we'll have better and better integrations from Samsung. And that's what this is setting up and just so you know you don't always forever have to have 653 devices into Google and Amazon Samsung has stated that they will work on this it's just whether it's first in the priority list or fourth so my recommendation here for migrating those integrations it's it's kind of twofold if you got a big smart home and you know you're going to end up with a lot of duplicates, it's going to be painful. With Google, you can kind of move your excess devices into a second home in that application and that actually works really well. The other thing you can do with Amazon is change the names to really random characters and you won't trigger those as you go forward. And both of those tactics work in, in the systems to manage that duplicate device issue. Some things have changed already though. You know, the history in the Classic app has already been migrated across and you have to migrate that whole Classic app by October 14th. Now, with that migration comes a number of other changes and you need to understand those. So that's why I produced the video that's up on screen to walk you through what actually happens when you migrate even a very complicated smart home like mine. Otherwise, guys, thanks for watching, and of course, don't hate, automate.